This video will go over how to install Windows 10 from an operating system ISO. So you want to boot your computer to the USB and or CD-ROM, whatever media your ISO is on. In this example, I'm going to choose to install Windows 10 Pro amongst the several editions available. That one's interesting for virtual desktops. Could have used that a few years ago. Of course, we must accept the end user license agreement. And I'm going to do a custom install because there's no OS on these uh, on this drive. Nothing to upgrade. And Windows is going to copy files over the hard drive, install the features, install its updates, and then finish. We're going to have a couple of reboots during this whole process. Installing Windows 10 is very simple. Um, basically, your minimum hardware requirements are very similar to Windows 7. It's been my experience that if the computer can run Windows 7, it can run Windows 10 without too much of a problem. The only difference I would really state is that while Windows 10 can install on a computer with a rotational hard drive, that installation will not flourish. Windows 10 works much better on a solid state drive most anything works better on a solid state drive so if the budget isn't there to replace the computer maybe the budget could be considered for replacing the drive and installing Windows 7 on an SSD here's our first reboot now at this point when it reboots the setup is going to run from the internal hard drive the install files haven't been copied from the USB to the internal hard drive I do all my hardware testing and operating system testing in virtualized environments. Being where I'm workstation being my application of choice, though they all work. I've tried them all. Virtual box, parallels, they all work fine. Now the next part of setup is going to walk us through a wizard of choices to make regarding user account setup, features to enable or disable, cloud settings, Cortana settings. So that's what the next part is going to entail, just a wizard to walk the end user through this. And here you can make some choices depending on what your preferences are. Now I've sped up some of the animation here that we're seeing so that it would not be a long and drawn out process on the video. So the actual time that it would take to do all this would be longer in reality. Still, despite its actual length, much quicker than installing Windows operating systems of old. As far as performance goes, I would probably suggest any machine that has at least 4 gigs of RAM, a dual core processor or better. Even integrated graphics is really fine depending on what you're doing. Of course, you're not going to game on integrated graphics, at least not very well. Solid state storage, like I said before. And you're, you're pretty much it. Most computers within the last 8 years meet that specification. So Windows 10 will run on pretty much anything. Driver support is very good very good, maybe even good to a fault that it'll sometimes replace drivers one intentionally install it with its own version. But other than that, it's a fairly solid operating system. progress wheel shown here um, just are basically running through an unattended an attend file on the uh, installer so it can just go through and process every step of the installation process you just don't see it Cortana is now doing her narration 
I turn it off. At least the audio part. Nothing against Cortana. I just don't find it particularly useful. I know where I keep stuff on my computer. I don't need to search for it. If I want to search the internet, I can open up Google. First part is your region, the United States, where I am. And US keyboard layout. I don't need to add a second keyboard at this time, although you can do it later from the control panel. Now it's time for the important stuff. We're going to set this up for an organization, not myself. And I'm going to opt to use a domain join instead of a uh, cloud account. But although they're really uh, insistent on using a cloud account for obvious reasons. A lot of time too, this user that I create during setup is not uh, is not persistent. I just use it to get through setup, and I'll actually configure the dedicated user account if it's not Active Directory based later on. And starting with 1803, they force the security question option for uh, Windows setup. This can vary depending on uh, the person doing it, but in an enterprise environment, the answers and the questions here should be standardized. And this is a great example to, uh, of why you should automate this whole process. I don't need a timeline, thank you. And privacy settings. I turn all this stuff off. I don't use any of these features. I'm not interested in any of these features. So, uh, you know, we're paying for this. Microsoft does not need any telemetry data. Almost done. Writing that stuff down. Although sometimes it's funny how those settings tend to be re enabled later on down the line. Despite disabling them during setup. Windows sign in animation. This step could also be disabled through a group policy or registry edit for new users logging into Windows so that you don't have to see this every time someone logs in for the first time. Uh, very appropriate for places like computer labs and classrooms where a lot of times user profiles are not kept between logins. So anytime someone logs in, they are logging in for the first time and having to see this each time could become very, very annoying. And we're logged right in with the setup account we created during Windows setup. Edge welcomes us with some kind of advertisement. So what I'm going to want to do is update Windows. Even though Windows Update installed updates during the operating install process, usually not everything gets installed. There's something, uh, something remaining. So we'll open up the control panel and see what we need to complete. Usually something. .NET Framework, malicious software removal toolkit, things like that. Um, also, what I'm going to want to do is change the time zone. Windows setup defaults to the time zone in Redmond, Washington, headquarters of Microsoft, and I'm on the East Coast. So what I'm going to want to do is just go to the, the taskbar and change the time zone from adjusting in time. Pretty simple, very easy to do. I'm sure if I enabled location services, this would be set for me, but this isn't some big chore to go configure. Again, uh, automated 
uh, set up routines, auto unattend.xml, and custom ISOs built with third-party utilities can automate all the steps of setup. Here I'm uh, disabling the screen turning off. I want to be able to see it even if I'm not working on it for a little while. Let's see where we are with the updates. Installing that last cumulative update from February. And that's, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Windows install is pretty straightforward, very simple. You don't need a lot of technical acumen to do it. Even though you might not even understand what's happening underneath in completely with the choices being made, it's still pretty easy to do. Restart, and that's the end of it. Going to work on those updates, reboot the machine, the ubiquitous Windows updates, which are now a very, very large part of operating system lifecycle. Wasn't always the case. And there we are. We're all set. Finished.